good morning students hope you all are doing good and doing whatever your i am telling you your homework assignments children you have to mail me your assignments and homework at my email id as i told you earlier i'll be giving you notes in further videos so you should wait for me and today is the revision session and we will be clearing our doubts and revising our lessons that we will come in the unit test the first pt1 okay so let us get started the two lessons that we are going to re do revision of r is the first one and the second one so we'll go slowly and if you have any doubt if you have not understood make sure you comment and i hope you all are marking your attendance too so children here we start with our lesson revision revision let us start with our revision uh, for this is first chapter that is growing plants for food and the other chapter that is states of matter this chapter is chapter number 4 but these two chapters today we will be studying okay so let us start revision that is growing plants for food and states of matter first lesson that is growing plants for food what do we children do you remember this lesson if you uh, i will be explaining it once again the summary and in short explanation i will be revising it again but you also have to if you want the explanation in detail make sure you are you watch the previous video of this lesson okay so let us start the summary of this lesson what is all present in this lesson we will study reproduction in plants that is uh, what how do what is reproduction and how it takes place in plants like from seeds and uh, other parts like uh, of the plant various other parts it takes place too so the reproduction uh, is what the process is and what which uh, how it happens and how are the parts of uh, plants other pl parts of the plants are responsible for this reproduction we will be studying this in this chapter from like uh, the other parts they also reproduce help in the process of reproduction that is like stem roots leaves and spores also we will study the seed structure seed as seed is the basic unit or the fundamental factor in the growth on reproduction of plants a whole children as this saying goes we have we heard this famous saying a seed a jungle the whole jungle resides in a single seed yes so a seed is very important for the reproduction in plants so the we will see this with this seed its structure then we will see the seed germination and its stages we will see the seed dispersal and the agents of seed dispersal what is seed dispersal and what are the agents why is it necessary everything then we will move on further to crops what are crops then what are the types of crops the soil needed the soil required the climatic conditions required for the favorable crop which season and which are the classification of crops then we will move further on to agriculture agriculture as you all know children india is the country where agriculture is the not main occupation but it is the primary occupation of india our country our farmers grow crops and uh, vegetables and fruits that we or that is processed we process it in the factory and we, we we consume it right so agriculture is very important for our country's growth so what are who are farmers how they do the practice of agriculture how is exactly agriculture done that we will be seeing in agriculture and its stages so children make uh, make sure that if you still don't understood you comment and tell me and also you you have to send me your queries through my mail id that i'll be telling you okay at the end of this video so let us continue with this lesson children as you all know what is reproduction reproduction is that plants and animals we all living things reproduce this is the characteristics of living things they breathe they eat food they grow and they reproduce what is reproduce they produce more of their kind like a hen hen will give birth to a chick and a cat will give birth to a kitten like this they continue their own species like uh, by different ways a dog will give birth to puppies and a cat will give birth to little kittens right 
hens and ducks what they do they don't give directly birth to the young ones they lay eggs yes so similarly the all living things reproduce so plants also reproduce plants and animals create more of that kind so this is the process for reproduction plants reproduce in many ways like from seeds from spores from different parts of the plants that we will be seeing later on but why is this need why do they grow before going towards how do plants reproduce children why can you think of it i'll ask you a question why the plants grow from seeds yes come on scratch your heads and tell me you may note down your answer children why have you ever thought why will the plant reproduce yes why they bear flowers they grow fruits as they want to continue their own kind like if a mogra plant won't give won't produce flowers and seeds how it will be the only mogra plant and it will die right so they need to sustain and maintain their species so that's why reproduction is necessary let us now see how do plants reproduce plants reproduce from various ways like different ways like from stem from leaves from roots and from seeds so they have different ways we till now you all knew like we i am the plant is grown from just a seed no this is a misconception conception there are different paths which also help in the process of reproduction that you have seen in my previous video that is in detail but still i'll explain it to you in a glimpse okay before going to that as i told you seed is the fundamental part of the plant right a seed a whole jungle resides in a seed so a seed has a baby plant inside so if you want to know how the seed reproduces you need to know the structure of seed so seed has a thick outer covering called the seed coat or it is the protective covering as we are wear clothes maybe seed coat is the co- cloth of the seed okay if a seed coat is removed you will see the two seed leaves that is cotyledons present inside it then between the cotyledons there is a baby plant called the embryo this embryo is divided into two parts the shoot and the root shoot will become the stem it and it will grow up upwards it will it is also called as the plumule whereas root will go downwards and it will become the root as you all know and it is also called the radical so in the process of this was the structure of seed and embryo has two parts root and shoot so first of all the stem doesn't come in the germination process the root is the first one that goes down and holds the anchors the plant help is to get a firm hold on the soil and then the shoot grows starts growing okay this process is what it is called seed germination the growth of a plant from a seed is the germination process it depends on number of factors like temperature air light etc now most most of the plants need grow they grow from seed but all seeds do not grow like if they don't get a favorable condition any one of the factors is missing they won't germinate so that's why a good seed or bad seed like a damaged one won't give rise to a plant only a healthy and proper the seed that receives the conditions will grow into a new plant and germinate but why do need plants to why do plants need to germinate when seeds germinate they get enough water air and warm what do they need they need to germinate to become a plant right so what do they need is they need water air warmth and they use food stored in the cotyledons to grow the growth of the baby plant is the germination process now this baby plant that i'm referring to is called when it grows up to the, that picture fourth fourth number you see is called the seedling so as you can see here in the pictures the stages of germination are first of all the in the first picture the what happens the embryo root the root i told you it comes first out and goes downwards into the soil then what will happen the root will start growing and the cotyledons once the root has gone down the cotyledons in the third stage you can see the th- third number of the there the shoot starts coming upwards in the sky towards the sky and then it starts growing and the cotyledon starts becoming smaller and smaller till it 
shrinks and falls off why because the food stored inside the cotyledon is used by the baby plant uh, as it is coming coming out of the uh, cotyledon the stem grows longer and the first leaves start developing as you can see there and as the seed develops the cotyledon will fall off and the germination process is completed now we come on now we saw what was seed that is the germination now what is seed dispersal then if the germination is the process of growing what is dispersal dispersal is like scattering or throwing of the seeds the carrying away of roots and seeds to distant places from the parent plant is known as the seed dispersal and the forces the agents of dispersal are are wind water and animals they are the agents like seed seed dispersal happens with the help of wind water animal and self explosion also how does this happen wind helps to carry the leaves which are the seeds which are dispersed by wind are either light or they have wings or hairs as in the example is dandelion plant okay then dispersion of water takes place like in trees like coconut they have hard but light and they are carried by water to different places and once it gets required conditions it will give rise to a plant animals when they eat fruits of the plant the seed is present inside the food right fruit so as in when the plant suppose for an a monkey eats the fruit or apple fruit on one plant and it swings to other trees and moves on from there away so the seed is carried away like if it is a spiny leaf spiny seed sorry it will get attached to the body of the monkey and it will gets dispersed on the mud in the jungle like this the animals help in the process of dispersal what is explosion some plants like fruit pea pea pods have you seen we call it in in the matter paneer you make the that is the pea plant it in that what happens is once the pod is full mature the seed will burst open and the pods the the seeds in them the pods will scatter here and there and the give rise to a new plant so this was the dispersal through self explosion now we saw the seed germination its germination and dispersal but how the other plants help in the process of reproduction as i told you earlier in the showed you in that concept map right so children you can you have to draw those concept maps in your notebook too so new plants from other plants part of the plant like from stem what happens is have you seen a rose plant a stem of the rose plant is taken and planted in the soil it will give rise to a new plant from roots as you all know take a rooted sapling with a root you plant it from one place to another it will give rise to a new plant and it will grow and nourish well so from leaves uh, the example is bryophyllum plant it has buds on its edges so each bud will give rise is capable of giving rise to a new plant if it falls off in a, on a on the soil and gets a favorable conditions it will give rise to a new plant now from pores what are pores some plants like ferns and mosses are mushrooms they do not bear flowers so how will the seed grow so they instead they have tiny powder like reproductive bodies called spores and the spores help in the process of reproduction yes then we i told you what we'll see what is agriculture the practice of growing plants on a large scale for food or other purposes is called agriculture then we'll see the types of crops are that are present that are cultivated in agriculture are the rabi and kharif crops rabi crops are the or also they are called as the winter crops they grow in winter season from november to april and kharif crops are the summer crops they are grown from june to october for example jowar and bajra and the rabi crops are wheat and mustard okay the different stages of agriculture that we we saw was plowing enrichment of soil sowing once the land first of all the land is plowed and made plain for planting the seed okay enrichment is done so that the soil becomes fertile then sowing of seed is done water is provided that is irrigation then use of chemicals like to avoid pesticides or pest affecting the crop 
and then the harvest finally the the crop is fully matured the harvest is done that is the cutting and it is stored properly once it is stored it is transported to industries and groceries and we get it okay so this was about the first lesson now you let us solve some worksheets based on it now you have to guess the what is the factor behind it okay guess who am i you have to answer now i grow in a black soil i am what yes children come on guess guess what is it i grow in black soil which crop must it be yes the answer is cotton i grow plants for you who am i who go, who grows plants for you do doctors grow crops no so who grows yes the, your answer is correct farmers grow then you have my seeds dispersed through wind i am which children just now talking about seed dispersal which plant i gave you the example just now yes the answer is dandelion plant yes next is i travel through water to get germinated who am i when through water dispersal which plants get uh, goes for germination yes coconut plant correct I am a seed I need some conditions to grow what are the condition the seed is asking you what are the conditions will he need for growing so the answer is air warmth water sunlight yes these are the four factors that are required so the seed the answer for the seed is a seed will require air to breathe warmth or the sunlight is one and the same and water and also the minerals is but these are the four essential ones i am a crop my types are what are the types of crops we just now discussed yes yes children correct it is rabi or the winter crops kharif or the summer crops correct now observe the following picture of a seed and label the parts in the boxes children pause the video draw the sister draw the seed and you have to name it yes come on let us start the first one is the seed coat yes as, as i told you we wear clothes seed also have their seed coat we have the embryo which is has two parts root and shoot but you don't have to mention this in the you can also label that too but that is the embryo now come to this one this is yeah the cotyledon is present the cotyledon is providing food and finally the last one is also the seed coat yes hope you have labeled it let's move on further identify how these plants reproduce now children tell me how these plants reproduce the first one is bryophyllum from the other plants i told you it will reproduce with the help of leaf correct potato it is the example of okay rose it it produces through stem correct then sugar cane also stem potato is also a stem that is modified one spinach and mango will uh, mango plant will grow from seed and the spinach is the leaf of the plant okay so that was the end of that first lesson now we have our second lesson that is states of matter so let us get now quickly revise this state of of matter chapter okay then now the summary of this lesson what all is there in the lesson we will substances made up of in while discussing that we will see what are atoms what are molecules yes the next topic that we will be learning learning is states of matter that are solid liquid and gas we have change in state so how the changes in state takes place that also we will be learning then we'll see what are the types of changes that that is the type of changes that we dis, will discuss is the reversible and irreversible changes the second type is physical and the chemical changes we'll also discuss what is corrosion and combustion then we'll go on to the solubility of substances we'll see solids and liquids liquids and liquids and ga gases and liquids too 
then we will move on further to the properties of substances like the thermal conductivity electrical conductivity and what is finally what is magnetism and then stop okay so let us discuss this concepts all these things one by one okay mm, sure now children stage of matter the ship everything in this world that occupies mass and space is made up of matter the particles that we see are the smallest now everything in that has mass like me you the ceiling classroom buildings even a tiny pencil everything children is made up of cells and if we consider a smallest particle okay everything every, every material made up of it has its own smaller particles but these particles are not the we can't see with our naked eyes in fact the substances are made up of very tiny particles so these particles are called atoms or, or the molecules in hmm, yes now what are atoms it is the smallest unit the smallest unit basic unit of any matter is called atom but what is molecules each and every substance has some special qualities of its own these qualities are the properties of that substance so a molecule is the smallest particle that the substance shows all of the properties and is capable or of, of existing independently a molecule is made up of one or more atoms so atom is only a one but a molecule may be may be made up of one atom or more than one okay for example in water we have two molecules two atoms like hydrogen and water atom so it will give rise to a one water molecule okay then we will see what are the states of matter as you all know children all substances are made up of, of matter so there are matter exists in three states basically the that they are matter is anything so these the basic states that exist are gas solid liquid and gas yes the states are solid state liquid state and gaseous state as you can see here in this picture the solid state how the shapes are differing this is all based on the molecules now in solids children what is there as you can see here in the picture the pattern the molecules are the particles are tightly packed and they are in fixed position there is no space in between them whereas in liquid they don't don't have a specific definite shape they take the shape of the container they the molecules are moving in liquid as compared to in, in the solid and in gaseous states there the molecules are freely moving around they also occupy the space in the container but like liquids have the definite volume while gases they keep on expanding and contracting okay so the properties i have explained it in detail in the previous video make sure you watch that too again if you want okay and if still if you didn't understood make sure to ask me okay so these were the three states of matter so matter can be changed the state can be changed too so how this change of states takes place you have already studied that take example of water the basic water will exist in all three forms like solid ice is the example of solid liquid a normal water and steam we when we boil water it is the example of gaseous steam these three states can be interchanged on heating or cooling many other substances to change their state when they are heated or cooled okay but the temperature at which they are change state is different for different substances here i am taking the example of water for you for your better understanding okay when matter is heated or cooled the spaces between the molecules will change so consider the example of solid here when we heat when the ice cube we heat it is called melting and you can see here in the arrow melting arrow turns the solid into liquid water whereas when we heat the liquid it will go turn into gas into steam and again if we cover the gas we will get the particles deposited a water vapor and we can again keep it into fridge and condense it back it is called as deposition if we 
the snowfall that takes place from rain is the deposition whereas the water that we, when we cover the lid of while boiling the vessel water in a vessel the water that sticks on the lid is condensed yes so like this the liquid when it is freezed first we saw the inside arrows you can see is for applying heat when we heat it but the outside arrows of the double this one you can see that freezing sublimation condition right that is while when we apply the reverse process we reverse the process we instead of on heating we cool them so when we freeze a liquid it will from change from now so liquid state to solid state and when we solid when the solid directly goes to the gaseous state this is the process is called sublimation whereas the liquid will the gas will condense when we cool it okay try to understand this concept map we have an activity based on it okay observe it carefully the six ways or the phases of matter change liquid is the solid the let us i'll explain you once again the inside arrows focus on the inside arrows melting one we'll go in anti clockwise direction first okay melting solid melts into liquid liquid evaporates into gas gas deposits in the form of solid okay then inner circle is over now the outer circle liquid will freeze into solid and solid will sublimate into gas and the gas will condensate into liquid hope now you have understood right so we also saw now we saw the changes in the state of the matter but what are these when these changes take place what are the types of these changes the types of changes are reversible and irreversible change changes which can be reversed to get back the original substance are the reversible changes but we the changes that cannot be when the original substance is cannot be taken back it is the irreversible one for example if you heat a candle or uh, you melt a chocolate it we will get the syrup chocolate syrup and you once again keep it in the fridge and freeze it you will get back the chocolate correct so this is reversible but when you burn the wood or an incense stick it will turn into ash will we get can we freeze that ax or wax or sorry ash and get back the incense stick no so this is an irreversible change there are also other two types that is physical and chemical changes physically the physical appearance of matter changes that will be the physical whereas the chemical the in, inner composition of matter changes the molecules change and react that is the chemical change so the corrosion what is corrosion when iron is exposed to humid air it will rust and a red layer can be seen on it you might have observed in your window grills on your iron gates etc this is called corrosion as these substances are different from the original substance corrosion is also a chemical change but what is combustion combustion means burning of substance in air when a substance burns it forms smoke gases and ash these substances are different from the original substance thus combustion is a chemical change okay now we will see the solubility of substance children the solubility of substance when i talk about solubility it is the ability of a substance to form a solution what is a solution solution is the mixing of matter these three examples that you can see on the screen are the forms where the solution is formed first is solid like anything that dissolves in water or a solution any liquid will form a solution first type is solid in liquids when the molecules of solid find the space between of the molecules of liquid it will mix with the liquid for example you take salt and water it will easily get absorbed and the salt will disappear children it, it is it is not disappearing it is getting mixed with that water molecules that's why you cannot see it is not visible with our eyes naked eyes but it has formed a solution with it next type is liquids in liquids now liquids in liquids when two liquids mix with each other and appear as one liquid here also you will have two types of liquids both the substance will be in liquid state like 
but they are some are mix, uh, miscible and some are immiscible miscible is that they can be mixed like you, if you take milk and water and you mix it you cannot differentiate can you see separate layers or can you see this much milk and this much water no it gets completely and turns into one solution similarly while making apple juice or mango juice you, when you add water in the pulp can you differentiate is there a change in color no the solution takes place so this is the example of miscible liquids whereas immiscible liquids take an example of water and oil oil is also in a liquid state but this does it get dissolved completely in liquid that is water no it will form two separate layers yes children that is the example of immiscible liquid now we have the third condition that is gases in liquids we saw solid in liquid liquid in liquid now we'll see gases in liquid the best example is oxygen and water all the aquatic plants and animals breathe what how do they breathe the dissolved oxygen yes the they breathe through the dissolved oxygen if the gases were not mixable it depends upon the gases but oxygen is an example of gas which is which can be dissolved or mixed in water so some drinks contain carbon dioxide gas that we drink like coca cola and sprite that we drink they have carbon dioxide gas that's why when you shake it you can see the bubbles coming out of it yes so this was the uh, three conditions where the solubility of substances checked now we'll see the properties of substances different substances exhibit different properties because their molecules are are different okay like we all are different in our appearance even twins have some of the differences minor differences okay similarly it was just an example is there with substances too okay so the first property that you will see here in this chapter is thermal conductivity now what is thermal conductivity when the word thermal comes you should know it is related to heat and when i say heat yes uh, quickly the thought of warmth comes to your mind right so molecules of substance some substance can carry heat easily substances that can carry heat are good conductors whereas they which cannot carry heat are bad conductors for example consider a pan in which your mother cooks the vessel in which your mother cooks the frying pan is made up of steel and iron which is a good conductor and food is cooked in that whereas the handle of that pan is made from plastic why because it is a bad conductor and that's why your mother or mama you can mama can hold that plastic the handle and make the food easily okay so this was about the two substances which are good conductors and bad conductors of heat this property is called thermal conductivity electrical conductivity is, is similar as the heat conductivity thermal conductivity like in thermal the substance conduct heat and here the substances carry electricity for example aluminum and copper so the wires in a house that are used for charging and various running the electrical appliances are made from good conductors whereas to ensure the safety the wire is coated with what rubber yes rubber or plastic the switches are closed and with the help of the switch board is of plastic why because it prevents the flow of electricity and it is also called as insulator this is the bad conductor and is insulator okay so whenever you a person is using the electrical appliance make sure you are may uh, assuring your safety and uh, making sure the insulator is also do, do not touch open wires with your bare hands okay this was electrical conductivity of substance the last property that we will see in this lesson is of magnetism now children when i say magnetism you all know the magnets natu maybe natural and artificial magnets that you play with they are used in various appliances like speakers and all the so molecules of substances some substances are attracted by magnets for example iron cobalt and nickel they get attracted these substances are so strongly attracted by magnets so that's why they show the property of magnetism objects such as wood glass plastic and rubber are not attracted by magnets and are known as non magnetic substances so the similarly these three properties are same to uh, related not similar like uh, the 
good conductors are both present in thermal good conductors of heat and electricity and bad conductors of heat and electricity similarly in magnetism the substances which are attracted to a magnet have the magnetic property whereas they which don't attract they don't have the magnetic property okay now this is the end of the lesson let us solve the worksheets or do the activities just to brush our brain that what we saw previously in the video this long video okay we have come to an now we are coming to an end of this video so make sure you if you have any problem play back the video and uh, pause and uh, listen it carefully if you still don't understand children i am there with you ask me the doubt i'll uh, explain it to you again and again okay so let us solve children you see this concept map it is a little blur but i will read it out for you okay directions what you have to do here is use the word blank below to fill the correct to fill in the chart write the number or you can write the whole word okay so draw the circles and the arrows properly you have to focus on the arrows i explained you the through the concept map earlier at the activity is same just to make sure that you have understood that concept map that how the change in state takes place now the at the upper part of this left corner you can see add and on the solid above the solid circle and below also so above you will add something okay i'll help you out a hint is there like first you add heat and then cold so depending upon that now we have given you hint come on try to solve i give you pause this video and try to solve what will happen try to remember what will happen when you add heat and when you add cold when you heat the substance how the changes will takes place in solid liquid gas and how the change will takes place when you cool the solid liquid gas okay now i will show you how it is done okay so see first we'll see when the cold is when we cool the substance so also and heat so above part is of cold cool cooling process the, the below part is of heating it so when we heat a solid it will melt and get converted into the liquid state when we heat the liquid state it will whereas when we cool the liquid state it will freeze freezing will takes place and it will turn into a solid yes so if a ice cube is melted it will turn into water and water is freezed it will turn into a ice cube understood now the second now liquid circle and gas circle focus on that okay the last arrow also it is like solid will directly when it turns goes to the last arrow is pointing from solid to gas that is directly turning solid into gas this process is sublimation whereas gas is getting converted to solid that is called the deposition process now when we heat a liquid it will get evaporated through the process of evaporation and turn into gas correct and when we cool the gas it will turn into liquid so this process is condensation yes now we have filled the chart let us now move further hope you your answers are correct if they were wrong correct correct it again and write okay the next activity is take the correct statement now children you have to tell me which statement is correct molecules of matter are large enough to be seen with naked eye sorry there is a spelling mistake it is naked eye okay molecules of gas gases are different from molecules of food is that true yes the space between molecules never changes the attraction between molecules of solid is more than that of liquids pause the video note down the points and take the take your answer what you think and if you now and i then i will tell you the answer if your answer is correct or wrong you you should change it okay so the attraction between the molecules is more yes so they are fixed in structure so the statement is correct the space between molecules never changes no when you 
heat and cool the it will change molecules of gases are different from molecules of food correct yes every molecule has their different properties depending upon the substance molecules of matter are large enough to be seen with naked eye no molecules cannot be seen with a naked eye we have to see it through microscope and only okay so here we end up with a lesson here we end up with our video hope you understood it we have revised the lessons we'll meet in the next video if you didn't understood make sure you comment you're marking your attendance i hope you like you are liking my videos too this was for today take care of yourselves bye children meet you in the next video okay